Okay, so have you ever had that problem with your lawnmower where it will start from cold and then when you've been using it a little while when it gets hot, it stops. And then if you leave it a little while till it cools down again, it will start again. Then of course stop again when it gets hot. Well, if you are having this problem, then it could be a faulty ignition coil. And in this video, I will show you what's going wrong inside the ignition coil to allow this to happen, what's caused this problem in the first place, and some useful tips to never have this problem if your coil is still working well. Welcome to the Repair Specialist channel. I'm Craig, the owner and creator. And having been in the trade for around 30 years, I now make videos relating to the diagnosis and repair of small engines and machinery and how things work and why, and in layman's terms, using clear visual explanations to help you gain a deeper understanding and a firmer knowledge base. Why? Because knowledge is power. So let's get to it. And supporting the information in this video is a free download checklist which I've made on my website for you. If you just take a look at that, that outlines checks to keep your ignition coil working tip top and in good condition for many, many years. It's completely free and there's a link in the description below which will take you straight to the page onto my website. So then, that problem, when we start the engine on the lawnmower and it works absolutely fine for a little while, probably 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes even, and then stops, completely cuts out and it will not start again. And then we have enough of trying to start it, leave it, and then we come back to it in half an hour or an hour or something, and it will strike up again. It will start. It seems really odd, and it's really frustrating. So the ignition coil can cause this, and I know there's lots of incredible information on YouTube about these types of coils. But in this video, I want to go through something slightly different to show you what's going wrong inside the coil, why it's gone like this. I want to show you the processes inside of it. Right, so here is a lawnmower ignition coil. And to explain what I want to tell you, I need to show you its anatomy. So we'll take a cross-sectional view and take a look at it from this angle. And straight away, what you'll notice is the two coils. So the primary coil's wrapped around the iron core, and then the secondary coil is wrapped around all of that. And quite a prominent but extremely important feature is the insulation, which we've got here between the iron core and the primary coil, here between the primary coil and the secondary coil, then we've got a layer of outer insulation there encapsulating everything within. And generally, if we get problems with a coil, it's because this insulation is somehow degraded or damaged. And very shortly, I shall be showing you how this can occur. But for now, let's take a look at the very basics of how this coil works in order to gain an appreciation of the importance of this insulation. OK, so of course, the ignition coil sits on the outside of the engine next to the flywheel. And as the flywheel turns, the fixed magnet on the flywheel interacts with the ignition coil in such a way that the ignition coil produces electricity that it sends through the HT lead to the spark plug to create a spark. So the important part of all of this is at that split second that the magnet passes the coil pack. Because when it does, the iron core picks up the magnetic field from the flywheel's fixed magnet and that field is sent this way through the centre of the primary coil. To show that a little better, we'll take another look at our cross-sectional view. Of course, this is not the orientation in relation to the movement of the flywheel that this coil would work. I just want to show you what's happening in relation to where the flywheel magnet is. So then, when the magnet passes the coil, that magnetic field is sent down the iron core in the centre of the primary coil. This excites the electrons in the atoms in the primary coil, pushing them forward and creating an electric current. This current flow through the primary coil creates an electromagnetic field. This electromagnetic field is strong enough and large enough to engulf the secondary coil. 
This electromagnetic field only exists in the split second that the fixed magnet on the flywheel passes the coil pack. So as long as those electrons are excited and moving in one direction, this electromagnetic field exists. And so when the magnet has passed by, the electrons in the primary coil are no longer excited. This causes the electromagnetic field to collapse down to the iron core. As it collapsed, the electromagnetic field passed the secondary coil at near the speed of light. The field passing the secondary coil like this excited its electrons and set them in motion, just like when the fixed magnet of the flywheel passed the primary coil. But because there's many, many more windings in the secondary coil than there is in the primary coil, this upregulated the voltage from just a few hundred volts generated in the primary coil to many, many thousands of volts that's now generated in the secondary coil. And it's this high voltage that can now be sent to the spark plug to create a sufficient enough spark for combustion to take place within the engine to run the engine. So in order for this ignition coil to work correctly, it's vital that the electromagnetic field is produced within the primary coil. And in order for that to happen, an electric current has to flow through the primary coil. And in order for it to flow through the primary coil, it has to be kept within there by its insulation. So if the current was allowed to escape out of the primary coil, then the electromagnetic field would not be produced. It's the same with the secondary coil, any escape of that electrical current means that there isn't going to be an electrical current for the spark plug. But the insulation can start to degrade and that can cause shorting across of this current from one place to another through the coil. If there was damage to the insulation here between the primary coil and the iron core then that current would naturally flow to the iron core because the iron core is grounded to the body. And because electrical current wants to take the quickest and easy route to ground, it will naturally use this brake to get to ground. So this means the electric current wouldn't be flowing through the primary coil. It would be flowing out of it. Therefore, no primary coil electromagnetic field can be produced. And basically, we're going to get problems wherever there's a short and it would disrupt the whole system and the coil would be bad. Any damage to the outer insulation would also cause problems because any tiny cracks there would mean that fluid and moisture can enter the coil. And as we know, water is a good conductor of electricity. And so the electricity would naturally conduct out through the water if the water was bridging a gap between the coil and the engine ground. If there was a gap without water and the gap was near another area of the engine ground, it's highly likely that the electric current would sense a ground through the gap and then arc across to it, creating a spark as it does so. Again, this would disrupt the electric current moving through the coils. And so it's a little more understandable how this can happen and lead to complete failure of the coil. It doesn't work at all. But in our situation, where the coil does work when it's cold, but doesn't work when it's hot, how can that be the case? That seems a little more odd. Well, to answer that, we need to take a closer look at the insulation damage. We'll see that there's two main types of damage. If, like in this instance, there's a crack which is large enough to let the current flow out of the coils, thus disrupting them, then the coil will be bad, whether it's hot or whether it's cold. But if that crack is just too small to allow the current to flow out when the coil is cold, we must remember that when this coil gets warm with heat expansion, then that crack will open slightly larger. And therefore it may open large enough to allow the electric current to then escape. And that's where the engine stops. And then when the coil has cooled down and then we've got cold contraction, it may well be 
that the gap goes too small again to allow the current to escape. And so the coil will continue to work whilst the gap is in this small state. And then of course when there's heat expansion once again, the gap becomes large enough to allow the current to flow out again. I will mention it once again though, that there are many factors that can affect an ignition coil and what can make it go bad. What I'm mentioning here is what's said to be a more common cause and that's insulation problems. So that's all I'm covering. So finally, and most importantly, what is it that's causing it? And what can we do to prevent this from happening if our coil is running well? Well, usually whenever a coil generates electricity for a spark, there's some type of regulation system within the coil to make sure that it's producing enough electricity for the spark plug to receive in order to run the engine efficiently. And so then, if ever a coil detects that there isn't a sufficient spark getting to the spark plug, it will upregulate the amount of electricity it's generating in order to make sure that the spark plug does get a sufficient spark. That's the theory behind most coils anyway. And that might sound good because it seems that the ignition coil has got it all figured out and it's creating a solution to the problems it's facing. But that's not the case overall, over long periods of time. Because whilst the coil is upregulating the amount of current, it's producing a lot of heat. And over time, this can produce heat damage within the coil, the type of damage we've seen to the insulation. So what sort of things are we doing that can cause this then? Well, let's take an example of an incorrect spark plug. Each spark plug has a specific resistance down the middle of it that allows current to move in a certain amount of time at a certain level through it efficiently. If an incorrect spark plug is fitted where this resistance level is too high for this particular coil, then this coil is going to upregulate the amount of current it's producing the way we've just explained and it's going to cause heat damage over time. It's apparently the same with the spark plug gap. Even if we've got the correct spark plug with the right resistance through it and the current's moving through it well, if the gap is too wide then the current is going to find it harder to jump across to the ground electrode to create the spark and that in itself causes resistance. Another one is the HT lead, the high tension lead that carries electrical current out of the coil to the spark plug. If the resistance level through this lead is too high, the same sort of problem. And this is apparently a more common cause of this issue. Also, if the spark plug cap isn't fixed to the lead properly the way it should be, then it could create small gaps between the lead and the cap. And this again can cause resistance for the electricity going out. Breaks in the lead, even if you can't see it with the naked eye because it's behind the insulation, then this again is going to create resistance for the electricity coming out of the coil. But there are other causes, such as when we remove the plug and if it's plugged in to the spark plug cap and it's just hanging there and it's not grounded out, then that again can cause this sort of problem because the spark won't jump across the spark plug gap because there's no ground there. But another thing that's suspected to cause insulation damage within a coil is excessive vibration. So with this in mind, if we're speaking of a lawnmower, then one of the main causes of excessive vibration is either an imbalanced cutter blade or a bent crankshaft. Again, this is more likely to cause damage to the coil if used like this repeatedly over time. There is a couple of other causes that are out of our powers to prevent, if you like, and one of them is a really interesting one indeed, and that is the manufacture of the insulation. Because apparently sometimes when the insulation is made in the factory, air bubbles can form in the insulation. And if there's air bubbles in the insulation, then we're one step closer to having a gap between the insulation upon expansion and therefore shorting within the coil. And lastly, I just want to say that general aging of the coil if it's been working wonderfully year after year and then all of a sudden one year you start to get coil problems, 
we must realise that nothing lasts forever, and general ageing of the coil can find it one step closer to having small gaps and cracks in there to allow shorting across. Don't forget to watch the full length video if you want to do so. Thank you for watching.